Now I know of course, buying virtually is not for everybody and really only you can know what your own comfort level is. I don't think there's anyone when buying a home that would not prefer to have the actual time, the resources, and the lack of any constraints to fly or travel to an area to our homes in person, make an offer, and then fly home to pack while the lender and the title company finish up the transaction. But in today's market where homes are on and off the market in the snap of a finger, where by the time that you're able to even coordinate a flight to go see a home in person, it's already pending, or for those with constraints that just don't allow for a trip, being able to buy a home online is really a great option. Step one, start early and identify your needs. As soon as you have an inkling of an idea that buying a home might be in your future, starting your research is key. What's important to you? What are your needs versus your, I'd be nice to have. Are you moving due to a job? And maybe you have concerns about commute or maybe comparing school ratings is more important to you. You may be wanting to buy a rental, in which case knowing about the local industry and if there are city or state costs and regulations for landlords would be useful information to locate. Knowing the affordability of the area, how property and state taxes work, specific culture, maybe even the weather, all these things help to familiarize yourself with an area when buying a home. Now, obviously you're here on YouTube, so research online is not foreign to you. So once you've narrowed down where you're gonna be moving to, another great place to look online is the local Chamber of Commerce's website, which can provide a lot of useful information as well as many times links to additional resources. Researching school ratings can be done on greatschools.org or you can also drive around the city via Google Maps, typing in a physical address in an area that you're looking at. These are all good places to begin. I know too that when I bought rentals out of state, I even joined two Facebook groups, one for the local town and one for the police department to get an insight into the daily life and the feel of the town. And don't forget too, researching moving transportation options can also be accomplished online or via the phone from your couch. If you're needing to ship housing goods, starting this research process earlier than later is necessary and can save you a lot of stress knowing your options as well as what advanced timing you're gonna be needing to reserve any vehicles or any pods. The step two, find an agent. Find an agent that is versed in working with clients that are from out of town. Hiring a buyer's agent will give you not only the feet on the ground, but expert insight into the market of the town and the feel of the neighborhoods that you would not otherwise have by looking online. In your first meeting, whether it be via Zoom or over the phone, talk about your specific needs and your likes with your agent. Do you need a home with a yard? Not concerned with whether it's one or two stories? Maybe you don't want a commute longer than 30 minutes. If it's for investment purposes, are you looking to find a home that is already rented to take over the tenant when you purchase it? Your agent should also know the pulse of the current market really well. How long are homes on the market? How aggressive do you need to be in your offer for a particular home? Or maybe not aggressive at all. Knowing the market and your needs together is going to allow your agent to help structure a very strong offer for you. Your agent will also be able to set you up directly with their MLS search so that you're getting real-time information on homes as they come on the market. It is never fun to find a home online that you get really interested in and you call your agent and then find out the site you'd been on hadn't been updated and the home has been pending for two weeks already. Once you've narrowed in on a home or a few homes that you'd like to see, having an agent familiar with out of area clients helps to provide greater information during the video or the live home tours. They don't only then show the home, but they're also describing it to you more in depth as to what they smell or the creaking of the floors, that kind of information. Step three, get pre-approved. Of course, if you're paying cash though, this step can be eliminated. Having a pre-approval not only makes you competitive when you offer on a home, but it also gives you the price point of what you can or cannot qualify to buy, and it provides you with an idea of what your monthly payment is gonna look like for budgeting purposes. Or if you're looking at renting, the monthly payment will be a part of your calculations when you're determining if a particular investment property makes sense for you. There is nothing worse than wanting to offer on a home and then being told it's above your budget or opposite having missed out on a house that you didn't realize you actually could have afforded until it was too late. 
A local lender can be a great resource. Out of area lenders may not be familiar with local property tax amounts, their payment schedules, local inspection regulations, or title and escrow fees, which results in a purchase cost estimate at the beginning that could look very different from the final figures once they've dialed in on the area costs at closing. Having a local lender can also sometimes strengthen your offer when you're competing against other offers on a home. Many local lenders have rates and fees that are completely competitive with the nationwide call center lenders, and they tend to provide a bit more of a personal experience with less last minute surprises at closing. If you're not sure how to find one, use your agent as a resource. They work with lenders all the time. In today's virtual world, the lenders can work 100% online as well. So stay sitting on your couch. Most all lenders have secure portals for you to communicate through as well as share personal information and documents needed for the qualification and underwriting approval process. Anything that they need to have signed other than the closing documents can also be signed in their portals electronically. Now I will circle back to the closing documents later, but know that these two can be done at your current location on your couch. Step four, find a house. So you've done your research on the area, you've found an agent who's helping you guide you through the process, and you're pre-approved, providing you the ability to put an offer on a home once you find it. Almost all listings have pictures of the houses online for you to see, both inside and out. And some even have a virtual tour where you can feel like you're kind of walking through the house as you're clicking on the buttons to give you an idea of the layout of the home. But what those pictures and virtual tours don't show are the things that your agent can. Does the house have a distinctive smell? It smell like animal? Maybe it's musty. Are the bedroom ceilings eight or 10 feet tall? Maybe the noise from the traffic on the street on the other side of the fence in the backyard when standing back there kind of dampens the reality of a serene and quiet retreat. Or the neighbor's dog apparently really likes to bark. Your agent should be able to provide the option too of a film wide angle 360 degree tour of a home and its neighborhood for you so that you can watch at your convenience. There is nothing worse than buying a home to later realize that the pictures online hadn't captured the fact that the green bathtub was the only thing that hadn't been replaced in the bathroom remodel or that behind the house, there's a parking lot to a grocery store. Another option, and even better, is when your agent can personally tour the homes with you live via FaceTime Messenger, WhatsApp, Skype, just to name a few. Having the personal tour with your agent gives you that opportunity to ask the questions, open the cupboards, see if they're quiet clothes, show you the closet space and how big or how not big they are, get an idea of the measurements of the room, and even look closer at something that had maybe caught your eye in one of the pictures online. One question I do like to ask my clients is if they've been to the area before or if they're hoping to make a trip at any point prior to closing. Some clients have no ability to make it to the area until after closing. Others, they may have a small window that they can take time to drive or fly in for a day or two. If you're of the latter, make sure to talk with your agent regarding if there are better days to maximize the options of homes on the market to plan your trip. Coming to the area and touring homes with your agent can help give you a good feel of the different neighborhoods and the towns so that later, when there is a home that grabs your attention and your interest, you can relate back to the trip and conversations with your agent when they describe what area it was that you'd been in that this home is near, giving you a better picture in your mind of the home setting. Another option, depending on the different state's regulations, is to instead make the trip to see the home during the inspection. Here in Oregon, we have a 10 business day inspection window from the time of acceptance and going pending. So a lot of times what my clients will do, will take the opportunity to come see the house at that time when they can actually spend a few hours both in and around the house, as well as walking around the neighborhood while the inspector goes through the home. If during the inspection window, you realize that this isn't what you expected, you can back out of the offer during that inspection period and still receive a refund of your earnest money. But no, this is all just a bonus if you can make a trip. It is not required. In fact, when I bought my rentals, I didn't have the opportunity to fly. So everything I did was 100% online via phone and email with a lot of communication with the experts that I'd hired to assist me. This leads us to step four, the home inspection. Once you've found a home, you've worked with your agent to create a strong competitive offer, went over everything over the phone and via email, signed the documents electronically from your couch, and have an accepted offer. Yay! It's time for the home inspection. 
Looking online, it is easy to find home inspectors in the area. Though too, your agent can provide you a contact or a few of local inspectors that they've worked with. Your agent can also help coordinate the inspection appointment for you. And then on the day of inspection, meet the inspector to go over any concerns that you might have. They can talk about what the found results are on your behalf as well. Many times too, if asked, the inspector can call you at the end of the inspection to do a virtual talk through of what they just saw, their overall take of the home, and if there's any concerns that they feel are important for you to know. The inspector will then also send the inspection report by email to you and your agent once it's completed within about 24 hours normally, and know that they are only a phone call away for any questions that you have had anytime you've been able to look over the report. Before we jump into the last step, step five, if you have been finding this information helpful or have enjoyed my video, please make sure to click the like and subscribe buttons down below and you'll be notified each week when I post videos about all things related to living in, moving to, buying and selling here in Yamhill County, the heart of Oregon wine country. The last step, step five, signing closing documents and completing the final checklist of items. Once your loan documents are received by the title company, they will contact you directly to coordinate a signing time that's convenient for you. There in your home, on your couch, in which the notary will bring the loan documents to you, go over them as you sign them, and then we'll overnight them back to the title department. If you're purchasing a home in cash, many times the mobile notary isn't even required and the title company will just coordinate documents via email to you with electronic signing to be completed. In this same window, you will want to complete the final checklist by jumping online to file a change of address with the U.S. Postal Service if this is going to be your new primary residence. And then you can also set up gas and electric utilities online, call to coordinate the water and sewer utilities in your name for the day of closing. And two, I always suggest making sure that your bank is in the town that you're moving to. If not, you should call your bank and become familiar with how you have access to your funds from a distance if you have any need for cash or to move larger amounts than a debit card can normally handle once you've left town. When your transaction closes, typically within a day or two after you sign your loan documents, you will receive a phone call from your real estate agent congratulating you that you have just bought a house from sitting on your couch. Your agent can then coordinate the best avenue for obtaining keys, whether they will hold on to the keys for you until you are able to arrive at location, or if you'll be renting the property, facilitating sending the keys to you or getting keys to the local management company for you that you might have hired to handle the rental. If you are looking at making a move this next year, take a look at my last video where I shared a recap of real estate in 2021 and provided information as to what the experts are expecting us to see regarding rates, home prices, and more here in 2022. Thanks for joining me today and I will see you there. Bye.